It seems like the only time Richard Nixon's presidency is mentioned, it's typically in a pretty negative light. When's the last time you heard anyone discuss how he helped ease some of the Cold War tensions between the US and Soviet Union and China? What about the two landmark arms control treaties he signed with the USSR? Sure, Watergate was a big deal, but Nixon still accomplished a few notable things during his tenure as president. And we could devote an entire video to detailing his more admirable achievements, but this is not going to be that video. Today we're going to be talking at length about how Nixon was wasted throughout his entire presidency. He probably consumed more alcohol than water. While it's true that Winston Churchill also drank like a fish, at least he helped lead the British to victory in the Second World War. So let's take a look back at President Nixon's most shocking, startling, and downright frightening drunken moments. He tried to nuke North Korea. While the vast majority of presidents haven't dreamed of pushing the button, if you will, and in reality they would merely delegate that duty to someone else if they had to, President Nixon came dangerously close to launching a few nukes at North Korea in 1969. Things got dicey after the Hermit Kingdom shot an American spy plane out of the air while it was flying over the Sea of Japan. Nixon was a bit tipsy at the time when he heard about the incident and reportedly immediately gave orders to retaliate with a nuclear strike. Fortunately, Henry Kissinger saved the day by getting on the phone and instructing everyone to wait for Nixon to sober up before taking action. Once Nixon did, he had a change of heart after mulling it over, as he put it. Nixon loved to put on film soundtracks when he was smashed. Whenever President Nixon got hammered, he preferred the musical arrangements featured in obscure documentaries accompanied by the sound of his own voice. If he was happy drunk, he would blast the score of his favorite 1950s documentary, Victory at Sea. But if he got sad drunk, he would simply put on his clandestine private recordings from around the White House. So, pretty much long before the advent of social media, Nixon was already engaging in what was tantamount to drunkenly scrolling through old Facebook posts and tweets while feeling insta-regret and shame. He was too drunk to take an urgent call about the Arab-Israeli war. On the evening of October 11, 1973, with the US and USSR seemingly on a collision course and just a few days into the Arab-Israeli war, Edward Heath, Britain's prime minister at the time, attempted to reach Nixon by phone to discuss the ongoing crisis. Henry Kissinger, Nixon's national security advisor, was put in an awkward situation because on one hand he knew how dire the situation was, but the last time he saw the president, he was loaded. He asked his assistant, Brent Snowcroft, who had been the one who told him about the request, if he would tell the prime minister no. Snowcroft then suggested they could tell the folks at 10 Downing Street that the president was merely indisposed at the moment and would call them back. In the end, Kissinger told Heath the president would be available in the morning. Before we tell you more about Richard Nixon's drinking habits, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. He was blackout drunk for the Yom Kippur War. War is stressful, and sometimes when people are stressed out, they like to drink. It's pretty well established that Nixon was buzzed during the outbreak of the Yom Kippur War, but he took stress drinking to a whole new level when he proceeded to be absolutely plastered throughout nearly the entirety of the Cold War era conflict. When Communist Party leader Leonid Brezhnev made threats against Americans, Nixon failed to send him a response because he was, quote, too tired. Kissinger and Secretary of State Alexander Haig constantly had to cover for the president as he was either always blackout drunk or unconscious. After the Yom Kippur War was over, Nixon proclaimed to the media he had been indispensable throughout the conflict, more like incapacitated. He was a classic drunk dialer. Nixon was apparently a textbook drunk dialer, and according to some, he was one of the worst. The president enjoyed drinking alone, which is problematic on its own, but when he would get especially sloshed, he sought out people to annoy. Nixon would frequently ring up his staff members to either chew them out or fire them. Other times, he would phone his allies just to lament about how hard everything was and how he was getting the short end of the stick. Most people would simply ignore these conversations, knowing Nixon wouldn't remember them the following morning. The strangest drunk-dialed calls Nixon made from the Oval Office were to his old football coach, from whom he'd seek guidance and inspiration. The boys brought him a stripper to the White House. While Nixon might have done most of his drinking at the White House solo, he also had an assortment of drinking pals he would tip back tall boys with from time to time. Nixon's buddies would often aid him in getting into debauchery. 
On one occasion, Nixon's close mate, banker B.B. Rebozo, and several others showed up at the White House at 2 a.m. toting a trunk they declared was meant for the president. When the Secret Service opened it up, they found a nude stripper clutching a bottle of champagne. The Secret Service refused to let the girl in and sent the inebriated band of ruffians on their way. He lost his marbles and munched on dog biscuits. It was no secret Nixon loved his dog Checkers. He once even gave a long-winded, passionate speech about his four-legged friend. But at the height of the Watergate scandal, when Nixon's alcoholism and depression were at their worst, he was once spotted by one of his staffers gnawing on a doggy biscuit with his pet. While this wasn't the president's only display of odd and concerning behavior around this time, it was definitely one of the most memorable. Apparently, whoever saw Nixon mindlessly munching on the milk bones first backed away slowly before running off and immediately telling everyone they knew what they'd just seen. History has not been kind to Richard Nixon, but to be honest, he brought it upon himself. While there are still a few diehard Nixon supporters out there who believe he was dealt a bad hand, the majority of Americans are pretty much in agreement that he was one of the worst presidents in U.S. history. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think a sitting U.S. president should be drinking on the job? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Factsverse if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content. By the way, if you haven't joined Factsverse as a member yet, be sure to look below this video and click the join button. By becoming a paid member of Factsverse, you'll get access to exclusive video content that you won't find anywhere else. This includes some of our more mature content that isn't suitable for public audiences, which includes topics like Hollywood actresses who posed for Playboy and some of the steamiest moments in movie history. Plus, you can enjoy these videos completely ad-free. Our biggest fans will notice they also get badges next to their name when they leave comments on our videos. We pay special attention to comments from our members and so do other viewers. So if you want exclusive content from Factsverse or inside access to discussions with other community members, click the join button to get started for just $4.99. There are hours of members only videos waiting for you with new videos added every month. And we're actively working on bringing even more features to help fans like you connect with other members and get more of your favorite content. Just click join and we'll see you inside the membership tab.